Hello, I welcome you all to your own channel MSK Learnium. In this video, we will derive the equation for temperature function and set function for one dimensional heat conduction element. Right? So, for that, we have to consider one bar element of one dimensional. Let's say this is the bar element of having node 2 such that it's having 2 degree of freedom. At each node, this is node 1 and this is the node 2. Right? So, the temperature at node 1 is T1 and the temperature at node 2 is T2. And the length of the element, that bar element is having length is L. Right? Now, what we need to do that we have to derive the relation for set function and temperature distribution. Right? Now, so for that we can say that consider a bar element with node 1 and 2 and temperature T1 and T2. So, here consider a bar element bar element with node 1 with node 1 and and node 2 the temperature and the temperature temperature T1 and T2 right so now we have to consider one polynomial equation of temperature distribution let's say the temperature is distributed in this manner t is equal to a naught plus a1 x right so this is the equation 1 right so where a naught and a1 are the global coordinate a naught and a1 are global coordinate okay global coordinate so first of all we have to impose the bonding condition that once back come back to this uh, bar element which we have considered at this one node one t1 is equal to t right and x is equal to that position is equal to zero at this node two that t2 is equal to t and x is equal to l right so these are the two bonding condition we, we we consider now so we can write that boundary condition boundary condition what are the boundary condition we have just now we see the boundary condition that first boundary condition is at t is equal to t1 x is equal to 0 second boundary condition is at t is equal to t2 x is equal to l okay now so substitute these two bonding condition in the above equation we'll get again two equations so when you substitute the first bonding condition into this equation one the equation will become like this that is t1 means t is equal to t1 right a naught is equal to a naught only and at t is equal to t, t1 x is equal to 0 so when you put x is equal to 0 this term will be 0 so it means that t1 is equal to a naught let's say this is the equation 2 come back to the second bonding condition t is equal to t2 right a naught is equal to a naught only and a1 x is equal to l so the next equation will get that is t2 is equal to a naught plus a1 l so this is the equation 3 right now so these equation 2 and 3 from this equation 2 and 3 you can form it into matrix matrix form that is this is the t1 and t2 is equal to what that here you have a 1 right its coefficient is 1 here we don't have anything so 0 in second equation that is t2 its coefficient is 1 and its coefficient is l right and here you have this coordinate that is a naught and a1 all right now so now we can write a naught and a1 is equal to like this that is a naught a1 is equal to what when this will come to this side it will become inverse right so it is 1 0 1 l of inverse right into t1 and t2 all right so this is how we got the 
a naught and a one. Now we need to do that for some further simplification. So this will be like this. So you got the value that a naught a one is equal to one zero one l inverse of t one and t two. So its simplification will get that a naught a one is equal to that is uh, one by l minus zero, right? Into l zero minus one one. All right. Inverse of that, that t one and t two. So this is what you have a a naught a one is equal to it is one by l minus zero is one by l into l zero minus one one. And this is what we have a t one and t two. Right now, actually, if you look at the equation one. Right. So equation one is what which we have considered. The equation one is t is equal to a naught a one x. If we uh, formalize this equation into matrix form, the equation will be like this. That is, it's better we can write from equation one. From equation one, right. So from equation one we can say. T is equal to one x, and its coefficient is a naught and a one. Is it or not? A naught a one value we know this one by l l zero minus one one t one t two. So this t will become like this. That is one x, right? And a one a naught a one is equal to we can substitute one by l l zero minus one one. And here we have a t1, t2. Okay. So now this t is equal to 1x, 1x, right? Uh, sorry, that is yes. Again, we can write 1 by l, l 0 minus 1, 1, t1 and t2. Now what we need to do this. And this will be simplified. So this row and this column, this row, this column. So we can say t is equal to one into l. Uh, that is one by l first will get get out, right? So it will be like this: one into l is l, x into minus one minus x, right? This is again one into zero zero, and x into one is x. So this is your simplification when you simplify this and this, right? So next you have a t1 and t2. Now we can say t is equal to this l will multiply with the both that is l minus x by l and it is x by l, right? And this is what we have a t1 t2, right? So further we can say this equation will be like this that is l minus x by l is n1. And x by l is n2, so t is equal to we can say n1, n2, and here we have a t1, t2, right? So this temperature function we have a t is equal to n1, t1, plus n2, t2, right? So this is how we will generate the relation for temperature function in terms of the safe function, where n1 and n2 are the safe function. So you can say n1 and N two R SEP function, right? R SEP function. Where N one is what? N one is equal to L minus X by L, and N two is equal to X by L. All right. So this is how we will derive the relation for temperature function and SEP function in terms of the heat conduction equation. Thank you.